Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to declutter the right way. That is, according to the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. One of my favorite books of all time. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? So I always thought I was a fairly organized person and I think anyone that had been to my house would say the same. Things had boxes, things had places, everything was kind of like I knew where things were, but it never felt enough, it never felt right. I constantly felt like I needed to buy more things or the things that I were buying weren't right, didn't fit into my home, didn't fit into my life. I needed some life-changing magic. I finally bit the bullet just after the kid was born. And I was like, right, she has come with lots of stuff and mummy could do with having less stuff so that we can fit in all the new stuff that we have now got to deal with. I used to have an office and a, a small dressing room because we didn't have the storage in our bedroom for my clothes. So they were in like, this small side room and, and then I had my office and I had to put my office and my clothes all into one space. And it was just chaos. And it hurt my brain and I wanted to do something about it. And the book, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up got recommended in a video by Michelle B, who is awesome when it comes to decluttering, minimizing, all that kind of shiz was. I will link her down below. She is ace. And thank you so much for introducing me to this book. I did this with the, the baby in like a bouncer. She was at that age where as long as mommy was around and the milk was there when she needed it and her bum was changed when she needed it, she was quite happy just to sit there in the bouncy chair. We had some music on in the background and mommy just plowed away. And I'd listen to a chunk of the book while sort of night feeding and things. And then the next day I'd be ready and raring to go and I would implement the next bit of the book. That was my first mistake, if I'm honest. Do the whole book and then start because I threw out lots of Apple product boxes and then realized that those are the boxes she recommends at the end for organizing your drawers. So, read the whole book first. However, if you haven't got time to read the whole book, we're gonna be going into some basic steps today that will hopefully really sort of spark the start of your decluttering adventure. I would say that I don't think any video that summarizes can really encapsulate everything that I got from this book. It is life changing. It does change so much about how you perceive stuff and how you perceive what you buy and how you you put things in your house and how what you are willing to bring into your space. So really would recommend reading the book. It is available on Audible and I will link that down below as well. But if you can't, here's the video for you. So my, my step number one and my takeaway number one from this book is have a strong focus and reason why and visualizing your, your end result. How do you want your life to be that it isn't now? How do you want your space to feel? And literally sit down and think, how do I want to feel in this room, in this house, in this home? How do I want my home to impact my life or me to impact my home? And having this as will give you the sense of when you finished. She talks about in the book, keep going until something clicks. Now I haven't hit that point yet. I know exactly why, uh, it's because I'm constantly got the kid growing out of things. So I've always got this stash of stuff waiting to be sold and I do these regular mum to mum sales to get rid of it. But until she's going for long periods in the same size clothing, I don't think I'm gonna completely click. The other side is I have clothes that I will fit back into but don't quite yet. And to me, they're still clutter, but I spend a lot of money on them and I'm not getting rid of them. My takeaway number two is does this spark joy? Favorite phrase from the whole book. If you've seen this phrase anywhere, it's come from this book. Does this spark joy? It's just this whole thing, if you pick something up and you say, does this spark joy? 
This was spoofed in the Gilmore Girls, uh, like a year in the life of the Gilmore Girls, which I love, but I did disagree with this totally because they mocked it in that program and it's actually brilliant. And lifting things up, particularly if you're like early stages postpartum, clothing wise, I'd lift it up and it's like, yes, this does spark joy, but it doesn't fit me. Whereas if I was using other decluttering principles, I would have got rid of it. I lifted it up and I'm like, no, this does spark joy and I will get back into it eventually because I'd only had a kid like a couple of months before when I did this originally. So I kept things, most of it I'm back into now, but there's still a few bits that spark joy, but don't fit yet. And this was quite a poignant moment when it came to things that were my mum's. We lost my mum a few years ago. Uh, we lost her to cancer and we split stuff between me and my sister, my sister's kids, and I've got a few bits from my daughter when she's older. And I had things around, but actually, maybe half of them didn't spark joy. They didn't necessarily have bad memories, but I didn't like how they looked, they didn't feel right in my space, they weren't my style if they were clothing items. So I actually went through the things, instead of feeling bad that they were my mum's things I was getting rid of, I realised that actually there were lots of her things that did spark joy, and all I've done is just keep those items that do spark joy and the other ones have gone to my sister to see if she sparked by them and then she can move them on or sell them on if they don't aren't part of her world this is one of the things that she says is don't like pass off stuff to other people but I think when it comes to a, a relative that's passed away we can ignore that rule that rolls nicely into my takeaway number three is once you've decluttered you have to get rid of it super quickly I had a, a pile of literal rubbish, I mean, it might have been like recycling rubbish, but it wasn't suitable for a charity shop or to give away to anyone. I then had a bag of stuff that was for my sister because there were sentimental family things in there and I kind of, or stuff that she'd given to me and I needed to make sure it wasn't, I, I, it wasn't my place to put it in the charity shop and then I had a pile of like charity shop stuff and as soon as it was over it went into the recycling bin shed. As soon as it was ready to charity shop, went to the charity shop and the first opportunity to get the stuff to my sisters, I got the stuff to my sisters. I put it out of the way in the corner of our garage so it wasn't like tempting me to dip back into it because that's one of the big things is people will come and they'll start looking at the stuff you're throwing away and be like, oh but you love this, oh but you, and they'll talk you back into keeping it or they'll say they want to keep it when really they don't or you'll talk yourself back into keeping it and you'll end up with the clutter all over again, which is not good. My next takeaway was avoid attachment anxiety. So, whenever I have hit a moment in my life where I know the finances are gonna go down, so when I've retrained for something or I've taken on a new business or I've bought a new house, those moments of like, dipping finances normally spike my spending like I know the dip's coming so I buy lots of things the irony being is I quite often buy things I don't need does anyone else do this like I can't be the only crazy person I'm like stockpiling for a storm that's never gonna happen with things that I wouldn't need in a storm anyway so get over it get over it there will be a way to get the things that you really need if by some chance you throw something out. I think I threw out or, or donated over 25 big bin liners full of stuff. And there was one thing that I got rid of accidentally. I had two uh, blusher pouches. One was like nearly empty and one was brand new and I accidentally threw away the brand new one. Kicked myself for a couple of months about it until I realized, didn't actually like the color, <laughs> didn't suit my face, and I kind of needed to buy a new color anyway. <laughs> Felt a bit stupid for all those months of kicking myself. So actually, I did need to throw out the full one to make myself go and get a different shade anyway, so it kind of worked out. She does talk about in the book how you need to be prepared, you're gonna have a lot less stuff, but you will have what you need. And yeah, there might be a couple of things that you're like, oh, actually I need to go and get a few more of this thing. Like there might, I went through a lot of my underwear and realized that there were like a certain pair of pants that I really liked and I got rid of all the ones that didn't, but I needed to buy a couple more pairs of the ones that I did like. I would have survived with what I had. 
let's be honest, I would have survived with what I had, but I didn't want to have to be like rushing laundry just because I'd run out of knickers. Like, it's just annoying. I'd rather just go to the shop and have a couple more pair of pants in my drawer. I'd made so much space getting rid of ones that I didn't wear and didn't like, and that had like holes in, so I feel like that was allowed. My next takeaway was rather mind blowing. She tells you to, uh, to discard in categories, not areas. Now this seems a bit counterintuitive because it means it takes more time, but it does mean that things are more thorough. So I'm gonna use a really simple one, pens. You would say, I'm not, you wouldn't say I'm gonna declutter this chest of drawers or I'm gonna declutter my desk. You say I'm gonna declutter pens and you'd go around your house, your car, your office desk, uh, your ham, every handbag, every sports bag, everything, and get out every pen, and you put it into a place that you would normally have it. So she talks about putting things on the floor a lot. So you put all the pens on the floor, and then you go through them, and you just keep the ones that spark joy. Now I thought spark joy would fall down when it comes to pens, and it does not. I now only keep the pens that spark joy. The pens that I always go to when I've got a pot of pens, I'll always rummage around to find this certain type of pen, and I have quite a few of them. So I could just get rid of all the others. And that's what I did, I got rid of all the other pens. But by bringing all the pens I had together, I realized one, how many of the nice pens I had, but two, how many of like bad pens, dried up pens I had, random bits of clutter I had everywhere. And on your search for say pens, you'll find other things you didn't know you had. It's quite crazy. So yes, it does take more time in the short term, but it saves you a lot of work in the long term. And you have to tell yourself, any pen I find after this time, or any top I find after this time, any book I find after this time, goes. No matter what, it's gotta go. Like, I didn't find it when I needed to find it, it has to go. And that really makes you look very, very hard for the things in the first place. You can check out like recommended ordered categories either in the book or on Pinterest is a great way to find them because people have like expanded on it. It's, uh, she's based in Japan so hers are maybe slightly different to if you're based in America or you're based in the UK but they, they generally apply. You start with the least sentimental items and you finish with the most sentimental items basically. So you start with clothing and then you work your way down to like really like cards that people have sent you and letters and things like that that are much harder by which point you know decluttering is awesome and you're ready to embrace it. My next takeaway we touched on earlier is reducing until something clicks. Like I said I haven't hit this point yet but I feel like I'm still on this journey, I'm still learning. I've read the book twice now and then jumped back into it a little bit as well for like a couple of odd snippet all type things. I know the areas that need working on, like the categories that need working on, and it's in my head to do it, but at the moment it's not a priority because I've kind of decluttered enough to a, like a, a half click, a half click, and it is something I will go back to and I am something I'm very aware of. I think it's okay to have not hit the point of clicking yet as long as I'm aware of it. I'm not thinking I failed, or I'm not thinking that this hasn't worked. I know this has had a life-changing effect, and I can still visualize where I want to go. So I'm still in my journey as opposed to my journey is done. My next takeaway has made me a little unpopular when it comes to buying me gifts. I am now incredibly protective of what I bring into my space. This also makes it a bit interesting when people have got to buy my partner gifts because he doesn't like clutter and stuff for the sake of stuff either. And quite often presents end up like that. From like a decluttered person to a hopefully future decluttered person. Buy people things that are easily consumable if you're stuck. So candles, as long as they like don't take like 40 years to burn down. Um, soap, everyone needs soap. Soap is a great one. Like assess in their house if they like hard block soap or like pump and get like a really posh hand soap. Use it every day, it's a great gift. But it's used and done, so they're kind of like over it, as opposed to they've got to love and cherish it for the rest of their life, even if they didn't like it in the first place. I have found this has really impacted my spending as well. So 
when I'm going out, I'm asking myself, does this spark joy? So it's not that I just like it or I like it on me. It's really got to spark joy for me to buy it. And that saved me a lot of money as well. I love me a bit of organising and it was very tempting to organise as I went. But I listened to her advice and I didn't. <laughs> it was really tough. Make sure you have finished decluttering before you reorganise everything because otherwise you're going to find yourself redoing a lot of stuff. Declutter everything because you may find the storage box you need is buried full of stuff that you are going to get rid of and then that storage box can be moved somewhere else and it's just like so much easier. So no organising until you've finished decluttering, okay? The next takeaway is a hark back to the doing things in categories and collect things in one space. So even books. This was a bit like, really, really? There were a few moments like that for me in the book, to be honest, where I'm like, really? And then they'd work really, really well. And I'd be like, oh, okay. This is why this book's the best one. So books, she's like, take them all off the bookshelf. You can't just lift them off the bookshelf like one at a time and look at it and say, it's like, no, take them all off one, then you see how many they've got. And actually it was really nice seeing my bookshelf there. It made me much more committed to not putting so much back on it as well afterwards, which was really, really nice. So move everything into one space before you decide if it's back to And my number 10 takeaway from this book is you have to remember what you have learned. Don't do this as like a one-time thing and don't let it affect you because that's where it becomes life-changing. That's where it's gonna stop you wasting money and filling your home up with stuff and clutter again, is really thinking through the process you've been through. Make it like a meditative process. Like, just get in there, change your mentality about it and really learn from this experience. Whether it's the fact that you don't wanna go through it again or the fact that you're, you're feeling so much lighter. She talks about in the book like how people have lost loads of weight once they've done this or they've had like bouts of diarrhea after doing this because they feel this whole cleansed like body, mind, aura, soul situation, whatever you believe within those sort of hemispheres of stuff. Um, is that, yeah, it really has got to deeply affect you to stick. And that is why I really advocate reading the whole book or audibling the whole book. So that you've got all the extra little tidbits and the stories that she tells you really stuck into your head. That's what's gonna make it life changing. I really hope you have enjoyed this. If you have read the book and you have any additional takeaways, please pop them down in the comments down below. I love spreading the message of this book. I just, I'm so excited about the life it leads you to afterwards that I just, I can't, I can't explain. Also make sure you're connecting with us on the Super Mums community group, which is our Facebook group. The link for that will be down below. It's a great place to chat about your experiences, how you're feeling about going through the whole decluttering process, if that's what you're doing right now, and meet other mums. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.